before I hit the agenda, I'd just like to welcome our new Councillor Katie and our new Clark Tatiana to the table. Welcome to the great game. <laughs> I need a bigger boat. We do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Registered and non registered disclosable pecuniary interest and non registrable interest. I have one. Um, view Climate Partnership have hosted a presentation about the viewed area community pecuniary. Um, I am kind of connected to that because my the school the employees me are going to have something to do with part of that. So I'm declaring a kind of an interest in it. Um, I don't benefit from it materially in any way, uh, but I will ask for a dispensation just to sit here and listen when you're not there. Thank you that. Thank you. Uh, well, well, well. Thank you. Thank you. The full council meeting held starting to July 2023. I like suppose we do that. All in favour? Against? Uh, minutes of the committee to receive and note the minutes of the committee meetings listed below. Planning committee, 5th and 19th of July. I wasn't having it. All in favour? Again, abstain. Oversight committee, 20th of July, 2023. All in favour? Against? Abstain. Staffing committee, 27th of July, 2023. I propose we do it. All in favour? Against? Abstain. Property committee, 27th of July, 2023. Um, why does Stone Wilson was putting that into place? Oh, because it's something in the name. Because it's something in the name. Okay. We need to vote on that. We'll leave that one in the door. Recommendations. Consider and agree that the staff is going to agree that the changes to Park Health Centre caretakers present contract and the agreement. I propose we leave that one to the council, but I'll say it for the council. We can't because it's a staff issue. I'll second it. All in favour? Again, staying. Cool. Okay, correspondence received. I'm not, we don't read out all four letters. Has everybody seen and read them? Are we? Because the correspondence is very I'll second that. All in favour? Again, Opportunity for former councillors present to discuss. Yeah, it starts though, one of them specifically said that he read out was one of them. It, it, it did, but we never read any of the letters out, so I'm going to treat them. Everybody's read it. Government? Yeah. Or do you, do you want me to read it here? No, I wouldn't want to show it. Opportunity for former councillors present to discuss all council issues relevant to BSDC. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it seems like I've been very busy over the last month or so, um, but they're mostly local issues we'll be representing uh, 
local electors and people with problems like up to Cornwall Council have had a huge amount of homeless problems again uh, this month. I think it's probably the time of year where accommodation owners are probably cashing in on their assets and either letting them out short term lets or selling them and local people um, are suffering the consequences of being made homeless, which is heartbreaking to say the least. Uh, but anyway, Doug Warden, I met up with on, with on the 7th of July. I can't remember before. I don't think I reported this in the previous council meeting, uh, but he is comfortable um, that, that the policing of dogs on beaches is reasonably good. I observed what he was doing. I thought he was doing a good job. Um, he can't be here 24 7. Um, and on the basis that as a national community, we accept policing by consent. That is, we understand what the rules are and abide by them. Uh, by our own choice, I think that the job has been done well enough. Uh, I also met with Berries Avenue Action Group with Councillor Purchase. Uh, they're looking to do some work um, to improve the play area and the general um, estate around Berries Avenue. I'm right behind them. They seem to be a very active group. They've got lots of ambition. Um, I think there's a long term ask going to come forward for this council to consider. Uh, taking on the play area and improving it on their behalf, and I think they're quite happy to raise funds. Um, it's not on the agenda right for tonight, but I think it will be funding in the future, and I'll be highly supportive of that. Um, the access to some of these beaches has been clogged up with sand. Uh, we've been asked to get it cleared. I've been sure it's going to be cleared in the next few days, uh, just in time for some holidays. Isn't that wonderful? Um, on the 24th of July, the asset management group met, and I'm hoping that we've got um, affirmation that the skate park will be devolved to us. Um, as has been promised by Cornwall Council in a two stage process, which we believe has been discussed, and the mayor, as leader of our group, should be aware of. But the town council now is in a position to move forward um, with plans to do a more grand scheme in that area down at Brookgates. Um, other issues that I've been dealing with, I've been having a lot of issues with complaints about weeds on streets. And of course, Cornwall Council, a couple of years ago, um, as we did with this council, uh, stopped using glyphosate, so weeds now are a problem. There is no plan B in terms of clearance, it's just clearing them when they become a problem rather than maintenance, which I think is short sighted, and I think we need to come up with a better uh, plan than that. Um, I've had conversations with one of the service schools, uh, we've just operated down to some of these called Big Blue, and uh, this council gave them, oh, hang on, did you take the course there or any council yet? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Big Blue, this council awarded them a grant of £2,000 towards a, an adaptive surfboard, uh, which I think was a great move. I supported them with my community chest funding. Uh, they've got a view to create a uh, view to be recognised as a centre of excellence for adaptive surfing, which I thoroughly support, um, and I hope we're going to be hearing more about that in the future. Um, I've been hearing from Cornwall Council that very few grants and applications and bids and the funding that we coming from the feud area, and anybody that's got any ideas or any community groups with like small grants, there's a huge pot of money for small grants for small organisations uh, through the Community Area Partnership. There's also bigger grants uh, through lending up funding through the national schemes which Cornwall Council is administering are available, but we're not seeing many applicants from the viewed area. So if anybody becomes aware of anybody that needs financial support uh, to work their projects through, do let me know. Uh, we've got a new community link officer replacing Chris Sims. Her name is Sarah Ball. She'll be introducing herself to this council in due course. I met her on Friday the 21st and had a really good walk around uh, with her and showed all the issues that I think that should be on her radar for the town centre. I've been trying to keep on top of the canal management issues. Um, I'm promised that dredging still is on plan to take place in October and the repairs to the, um, the tramway and the access down to some of these beach on the south side of the river it's all going to take place towards the end of this year. I've also been talking about ongoing maintenance of the beach huts that are owned by Cornwall Council because they're beginning to fail um, and I want to see those looked up properly. And the final thing now, um, as long as I became aware of this, uh, there's a flagpole on Chapel Rock which is in disuse and I'd like to bring it back into use. Um, I know that we've had not high anxiety for the flags, but there might be another flagpole coming our way. Uh, with that, I'll end. Happy to take any questions from the council. So, I'm sure you're already thinking of a pirate flag. I'm mindful of what that is. Council, good point. Um, so, the, you mentioned the uh, grant support. So, are you suggesting that there is actually a possibility there that there is actually money 
to help people apply for grants in the first place, so like be able to fund a bike ride or something like that? Or is it the small grants where people still need to apply for the grants to start in the first place? <coughs> I think there are multi levels perhaps we could so this is for artificial organizations to community area partnership. Yes, absolutely. So for the community area partnership ones, you wouldn't necessarily need like the grant a grant wider layer of support for that. No. Okay. So you're talking for, for relatively small amounts of money, say yeah. a few thousand pounds. Yeah. And it's a very simple access, <laughs> simple forms, so the okay. community and officers will step in and help with these things. So those are for the, the, the higher level, the more money. The bigger organisations that might be going for tens of thousands of pounds, yeah. and, and I think facilitative grants, as you're describing, yeah. are available. Okay. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be. So then, uh, would it be possible for yourself to email those smaller community area network grants, that panel grants round, uh, the draft juices there round? They're the only ones that I haven't got seen any visibility on quite yet. Not as right. visible. They're not as well publicised, basically. So. Right. Well, well, they will come through the community area partnership. Yeah. So, uh, oh, and I can send the links to you. Yeah, that's how you yeah. Anything from members of the public? Mr. Jennings. How often does this dog one turn up? Uh, they're a bit like traffic walls, so you can never tell. Yeah, well, there's a like that version. I mean, I go down there every day. Right. And there's bloody dogs everywhere. Right. Well, well, I attended a, a, a full day with him on the 7th of July, and I, I witnessed him at work, and he was he was very prepared to take interventions. Uh, we spent probably an hour and a half on Sunday's beach, which um, is dogs on leads. We witnessed probably about four instances of dogs off leads, which we went straight up to the owners and had a kind word with them. They reacted appropriately. Uh, quickly, it's no dogs. We had a couple of hours there as well. Um, everybody apart from one couple um, with a dog reacted very welcomingly and understood the rules and understood the need to take the dog somewhere else. One couple swore um, aggressively and continued, well, they didn't continue, they turned pain and went off the beach. But he, he, he does intervene. I asked him how often he comes to view, and he says one or two days every four. Right. So, so but it's, it's, once a week. Yes. Or if we're not. Yeah. But it's, it's this principle of policing by consent that I described. It's not down to a police state to enforce rules and fines on people. It's up to people to understand the rules and accept that it's in everyone's benefit to abide by them. Well, you want to go down there and love my early mornings? Well, the life guards sit there. Dogs all over the place. Well, none of the dog restrictions are enforceable before 10 o'clock. They're all on the beach at 10 o'clock and after. No yeah. tie is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. You go down your eye tie, obviously, there's not dogs to lay. Yeah. It's just sad. Right. If you go down your low tie, and it's, it's just awful down there. It mm -hmm. really is. You need somebody there 24 well, every day. And then people know that there's somebody there and they won't do it. But mm -hmm. the chance of getting caught. Any more questions from the <coughs> members of the public? Thanks. Councillor Moores. Yeah, just to, I wonder if you might um, enlighten some of your fellow councillors and the public about the forthcoming closure of Lanning Wars Bridge because. It's been brought to my attention that uh, it says the 23rd of August. I said, well, it doesn't mean to say it will be shut for the 23rd of August. But, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so no, no, this has been publicised in this chamber before. I'm sure I have mentioned it. Uh, but Nanny Walls Bridge needs to be closed in order to install a, a stop block, uh, which is effectively part of the environment agency's work to um, make the bank from Nanny Walls Bridge up to um, Ben Coolan Bridge more resilient to yeah. flooding, um, and they have to close Lanigan's Bridge. They believe for approximately I think it's a month, um, which is going to make a big impact because the amount of foot traffic that uses that to connect these two parts of the town is huge. I I have asked them to minimise that wherever possible, and also not to close it over the August bank holiday where we've got life on weekends. Um, and I think our 
definitely can have block because that correspondence as well. So that's it, it is a nice thing to go. Yeah. So what would keep the suspense still there? No, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. let's maintain that suspense. Okay. Included in the update. <laughs> Anybody know? Oh, one more. All right. Is this for the council or public participation which we're about to move on? Um, no, it's for council. Go on. Um, they say that we've got to read plans and we have more appropriate plans. Could you suggest to them that perhaps they might like to plan some cameras? Which is a local bush. It's a very nice bush. It could even be a Cornish bush, which is even more appropriate. It does grow very well in the cabinet. And it was grow all over the Well, yes, it was all over the place. Let's be correct. Thank you, yes. I, 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 I can pass that on to the environment. Yes. yes. Okay. All right, uh, public participation. I'll, I'll start up your end, so I'll keep this. You got anything else to add? Hundreds. <laughs> well, <laughs> now is your chance. This is this, this, this large court that slap. Yeah. How much is that going to end up costing? Well, <coughs> my ability to predict the future is limited to the core midday. So yeah, what was that for midday? No, so the only answer is we don't know how deep that hole is going to be, are we? Yeah. So yeah, we're still having reports done on it that are coming back that, that need to be costed. So. So who's gonna who's gonna do all this thing? Because I take it you're having all these little meetings, you know, people the public can't attend. So who's who's gonna under keep an eye on the people who's spending the money? I will hand you across the property committee. Yeah, it's not the problem. Um I believe it's a member of the public who are more than welcome to attend the properties committee meeting. Yeah, but it said they only some something about it last one is it all it's gonna be shut to the People, members of the public. The reason it's met a section may be shut because it might be something that concerns the actual tenants. Well, that's it, but it's our money and we yes. have a right to know yes. where every penny's going yes. and when it's going. There yes. should be no secrecy with money. I, I was totally against the council but by Lord's Court, which is why I'm on the properties committee. Ah, well, that worked a treat, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, if you're having meetings about the money, then it should be open to everybody. Yeah, that part here. of the meeting is it, the intent, which is obviously a private relationship between them and the landlord, has to be private. You know, we, we can't get involved in your rental property. Not everybody's spending money on it. No, we, it's, it's specific to the relationship between them and us. I think mean, if we discuss your property with your landlord, you wouldn't want us going through your finances in full view of the public. Yeah, we have to accept. Most, you should be also, right, well, most people wouldn't want that darky. We leave it at that. You are welcome to attend properties, but there are certain parts of it that are legally private. It's no smoky mirrors job. It's mm, next, mm, the next properties committee meeting is scheduled, I believe, for the 31st, and it's in here at. Yeah, you're, quite, you're quite welcome to sit in. It's uh, there was no point if I got the door because you're talking about someone I can't There was no point in a meeting. I can't guarantee. Well, that, you, I can't guarantee that there won't be <laughs> you know, secrecy where there's money, public money concerned. There is no secrecy well, as, far you're as, you can't as, as far as as far as the money that is being spent, which was your original question. As far as the money which is being spent on those sports concerned. There is no secrecy. We have budgets, everything is going to be accounted for, and you're perfectly welcome, as is anybody else, to come in and sit in on those meetings. Um, there's rules within, within which we work, which means that where we're dealing with other people's financial issues, i.e., the tenants, on those occasions, we may ask members of the public to step up. But in terms of what this Council is spending on Lord's Court, that will be completely public domain. We're perfectly welcome to sit in. We'll even make a, a little section for comments from members of the public. Right. Sure. Right. That's a couple of questions, Darkie. Cal, are you here? I assume you're here for climate park. Just welcome. Well, so, yeah. Gentlemen next to Rob. Anything? Not at the moment. No. The long lad next to you. 
Yeah, I think you've got something. Yeah, go for it. Would you mind if I read this? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, go for it. Hi, my name is Harry, and thank you for listening to me today. Um, I feel that young people with learning disabilities, including autism, ADHD, etc., are not getting the amount of support that they need. I have autism, ADHD, slow brain processing, speech and language disorder, and sensory processing disorder, anxiety, and other health issues. I have an idea of being involved with a youth council so that young people can have a voice and give their ideas of what can we do to help other people in viewed. I would like to be able to work alongside the council, schools, and maybe the NHS to discuss what support is lacking and what plan we could come up with to make it a better place for young people to live. I would, but I would need support to do this. I'm passionate about making school better for everyone, including those with learning disabilities. I would like to ask the council to consider starting a youth council. I understand that this has been talked about before, but I would urge you to start this as soon as possible. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. Thank you very much for something. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Hi, thank you for going up and thank you for having that read out. Thank you for writing it effectively. We do have plans to do that. It's somewhere in the pipeline. So if we make a note of that, we will definitely engage with that young man. I don't know his name. Harry, okay. oh, sorry. We move on. Thank you. Do we need Harry Freeman? Yeah, have we got, have we got some, are, are your contact details in the letter? Oh, is it the range of your son? Yeah. Right, okay. We've got your contact details. Fantastic. Okay. Um, um, Chris, anything for this question? What do you think? I think you've got a mission based in your hand and you're going to tell us something. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the Deputy Mayor for attending the event that you were unable to attend on the 22nd of July. Yeah. Um, several people were present. I think it would be fair to say that we have a topic of time. Could I also ask that the presentation of the map to the Council, the Town Council, is displayed? I think if you could be sure that Mrs. King has it. She knows where it needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, next week, next Thursday, I think it's the 10th of August. It'll be the 125th anniversary of the railway arriving at here. Um, now, I know that back in 1998, um, Town Council did do various things. Uh, they did organise a few things. Um, and at that time, that was a very short period when I was in co-op town council. And one of the suggestions, we've had lots of, and um, the late Brian Dudley staff, and we were on the museums committee. And we had all sorts of ideas, and to be fair to the town council, they did do several things, but they objected to certain things that we suggested like um, trips by rail um, and thing um, and certain other things one of which was that we all kind of commemorative item um, <coughs> there is a commemorative item uh, but that was a private venture that mr stamp and i did and i have um that and the, all the paperwork that uh, correspondence took place to achieve that, which I intend to donate to the archive so that we know what's going on. Uh, so the, the other thing is a question which I asked, I think at the last meeting, I think it was the last meeting, I asked about the maintenance for the beauty rights. I asked if I could have a written reply which I've not yet had be smiling at me. 
No one presumed to find Roland's going to be the town clerk or facilitate it immediately. Right, you'll have it tomorrow. I think it did mention that was something coming, but but that's all right. It's you know. And the other, the other thing. Sorry, that... can I just? <coughs> I wanted to say that the blue light. We did talk about it at the OSI committee. All right. Unfortunately, you you weren't there for that one, but um, we did get an assurance from the facilities manager that they're maintaining it and in fact looking to kind of re uh, re. Do the lights that aren't working properly now? Right. You know the ones that were, were working yes. in sequence and so on. So um, yes, so there's there's activity going on. Significant improvement in quality. <laughs> right. And 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 the very last thing was, and I, I did intend to ask it at the last meeting, but the last meeting was rather busy, to say the least, and it's. Something that you're going to talk about now, but I just wanted to be clear in my head. It's to do with a real sports project about Dan Crooklets. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to know um, is it known when that area is likely to be inundated by the tide of foot? We sat in on our presentation as part of the BCP, EEA and everything like that. And obviously, to be honest, Rob can probably answer this better than me, but we were shown projections, but they weren't, it wasn't a, it will happen exactly 2030. It will be, this could happen right. by the next 20 years. This could be the next 50 years. This could be the next 100 years. I think it was in the 50 to 100 year bracket that that would have been underwater potentially off the top of my head. Right, okay. I may not be around then. Um, <laughs> You'll be doing um, very well if you want. <laughs> well, you see, you don't know. Do you? No, you don't. You don't know, mate. Um, yes, I think that's. I'm, I'm not against you doing all this stuff. You know, you're quite yeah, right. Yeah. It's for the use and everything. But it just seems that if it's very soon, it's a bit, and you're going to keep it more or less in the same area, that's a lot of money to be spending on something that you will be used. To the fullest advantage of the local residents who well, some of that will probably be yeah, addressed. Well, that's fine. We got, I think it's item 12. Would, would you like to write them in, Rob? Okay. On the scale, the, the thinking is that part of the uh, car park is a, is a considerable risk of flooding from the 2050s onwards. Okay, so if you were to seek permission to build a building in there, you probably wouldn't get to know. But if you're building a skate park which can drain, it doesn't really matter if the skate park floods two, twice a year. Mm. It drains and then you can continue using it. And the other thing is most skate parks have a lifetime expectancy of something like 25 or 30 years anyway. So right. um, it's within those. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I'm all clear and happy, but thank you. Well, are you satisfied? Well, that's, that's another thing. <laughs> 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 okay, that's what I have. Um, all right, will we write? Is there anything you'd like to add? I've written a speech, if that's the one. Right, right on. I hope my voice doesn't give up. Oh, sure it's not too long. Come on, put it. <gasps> And his mother. <laughs> As supporters of the aims of the Pride Movement, we do our cause no good by being stridently nasty to people in authority who are turning innocent people against the cause, people who have no prejudice towards what anyone does in their private lives, as long as it has no detrimental effect on others. I recommend highly the TV drama. It's a sin. Did anyone see that? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's really good. I'm, I'm a thoughtful person, having been the source of playful derision for many years for trying to explain the importance of trees and green spaces for people's health and the benefits of planners being allowed to change empty shops into living accommodation. So I do feel justified when I worry about some aims and actions of pride including filling the heads of very young school children with complicated ideas of gender. Being indoctrinated at such a young age may be fine. With any cult or religion, 
is to denounce their individuality and to ponder on the following newspaper cutting. Every parent should read these verses from the prophet by the early 20th century Lebanese American poet, Khalil Gibran. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts. For they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. For their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but not to make them like you. For life goes not backward, nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children are living arrow, as living arrows are sent forth. Thank you. Richard. We only hear to observe this back. I can make to retrospectively approve the quotation from any alarm to the necessary upgrading of the fire alarm system in the park of Turner Abergreen, that was like to me, held on the 20th of July, 2023. I can't if you wish. I think you probably. Yeah, no, sure. Just give some context and background. Um, <laughs> but for a number of uh, weeks, the alarm system at Parkas was um, resetting, and um, any number of investigations were struggling to find out why exactly. And then it was uh, discovered that there was an issue with the wiring. It didn't invalidate the insurance for the buildings, that was checked, but it was recommended um, that it was expedited in changing the wiring. So, um, whilst that wasn't agenda or oversight, it was recommended by a Sarah Mason account that it was put on the agenda, mm -hmm. discussed on, on that. Uh, meeting together um, and at oversight uh, it was agreed that up to the amount that we had um, up to, uh, well, it was below 25,000 we had a quote it was below 25,000 in it that um, that should be done immediately for the safety of the building um, so oversight agreed that and it's for you to rub a stamp that or not mm -hmm. I suppose we do that because it's nice. any questions mm -hmm. so far yeah, yeah. I'll that in All in favour? Against? Abstain? The amount of money that seems a lot of money for somebody that's been in the first place, but there you go. That's fair. Um, Good thing. We're going to update the June Climate Partnership concerning the viewed area community theory on climate change. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Mayor and councillors. Um, some of you might already be familiar with this because uh, some councillors are part of the oversight panel for this um, for our community jury. And uh, indeed, some councillors come to our partnership meetings either as departments or as, uh, as representatives to the council. So, uh, so uh, I've come to talk to ask. Uh, a request from you uh, for a commitment to consider the recommendations of the climate jury that we are about to uh, launch. Uh, but first of all, a bit of explanation about what it's all about and why we're doing it. Well, the reason why we're doing it um, is explained in the uh, panels that you've hopefully seen in the foyer of the um, park house. Um, has a particular sensitivity to sea level rise. What that means is that every millimetre or centimetre or inch of sea level rise has a slightly more profound effect here than it does elsewhere. Um, in, the case, in the case of you, it's only slightly more than other places around Cornwall and Devon, but compared to the rest of the country, it is really quite profound. And we need to think about what we're going to do about it. Um, fortunately, We've been, uh, was chosen for an environment agency project called Viewed Adaptive Pathways that produced photo quality uh, visualizations of the effect of sea level rise 
on our beaches, on our shoreline, um, if nothing is done. And those are the, you can see those in the, in the foyer of the park house. So what are we doing in response to it? Well, we're doing what's called a deliberative engagement process. And this is recognized as demographically valid and democratically legitimate because of the way in which it is done. And I'll, I'll explain to you how it's done. Um, it's been used in dozens of cities and towns and parishes and counties across the country because of its recognized um, methodology. In our case, we're going to be writing to every household in the view community network area, so view and the surrounding 10 parishes, uh, inviting them to participate in it. And from the people that uh, respond and apply, and anybody over the age of 16 can take part, um, 40 people will be selected. And they'll be selected by a process that's called, uh, that's run by an organization called the Sortition Foundation. And they're selected to represent the same demographics that exist in our community in terms of age, income, uh, whether, you live, whether you're a tenant or you live in a, in a home of your own, uh, and various other different demographics that are representative in our area. And we may also choose, we can do, to slightly bias it. And that would be a decision of the oversight panel, our company oversight panel, because one might decide that um, we want a sl slightly more uh, people who are from the younger part of the community because they have a, 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 a longer future. It's their future that we're talking about. Uh, so with, there's 40 people that will be selected from across the community, age 16 and upwards. We're also running a youth jury at View Haven School, and that will be 20 to 30 students from the ages of 11 to 16. And then they're also, we're also running a project in the primary schools where there'll be input from 480 primary school children aged seven to 10. So we've got every, we're, we're sampling right across the community from seven to however, uh, you know, into the nineties. Um, in the case of the adult jury, um, they will deliberate for 10 three hour sessions. And these will be guided by facilitators. There'll be expert commentators who come along and explain the science to them, the issues to them, and also help them understand what we as a community might be able to do, how to make change happen, um, the options that are in front of us. Um, for instance, Martin Alvey, who is the portfolio holder for climate change and the environment at Cornwall Council, he's going to be one of the expert commentators on, on how you make change happen. Um, and they as part of this process, they will consider a question. And this question has set, been set by the oversight panel. Now the oversight panel is made up of about 35 people who've been asked to join the community of core councillors. Um, the mayor was invited to, to join before you were mayor's mayor. Um, we have town councillors on the, the oversight panel, but also representatives from various different community organisations, ranging from the rugby club, the surf club and also expenses in business. Um, so, and the question that they have, uh, that they've come up with for the uh, jury to consider is how can we respond to a changing climate, including sea level rise, to support our community to thrive? <coughs> and at the end of the 30 hours of deliberation and discussion and advice and support that they will, uh, that the jurors will have, uh, they will come up with a set of recommendations, which will then be presented to the community. Now, just to say a little bit about how we, how the um, the jurors, as I said, you know, any, anybody can participate. And in order to make it accessible to all, we will support them in any need. If if, if somebody has needs their caregiver to come with them, we will pay for the caregiver to come. And all jury participants will will be paid for their time um, at the living wage. So they'll be, all be paid £330 for attending right across the, um, the, the full 30 hours. Um, they'll be provided with transport if they need it, if they need IT backup um, or uh, any support between sessions, they'll be provided with that as well. 
Um, we've, in this process, we're collaborating with the Environment Agency and with Cornwall Council through the Making Spaces Space for Sound project. Um, and we're being facilitated in this whole process by Shared Future. Um, and this is uh, Jane from Shared Future on the screen here. Um, Shared Future is an organization that have uh, done this dozens of times before across the country, very experienced in it. Um, as I say, we've also got selection by Scottishian uh, Foundation, 20, 20 to 30 commentators. And this process will start in September. The first sessions are on the weekend of the 23rd and 24th of September. Councils are very welcome to come along as observers. Um, then the second set of sessions are over the weekend of the 4th and 5th of November, and then the final sessions are on the 25th of November. So why am I here? Well, it's a request that the council commit to considering the recommendations of the jury. Now, what are these recommendations likely to be? Well, I don't want to preempt what they come up with, but it's likely that there'll be a mix of things that the jury decides that individuals can do to, to help the process, to help to help the community adapt to climate change and to sea level rise, but also things that we can ask uh, statutory bodies to do, whether that's town council, corporate <coughs> council, or the environment agency, or any other body. So just a commitment to consider the recommendations, which means more than just noting it, to to discuss them and to uh, respond to them, um, and also to encourage participation. So, among residents, when the invitations go out, to publicise it um, and to state support for it. And as I said before, uh, to attend as observers. So that's okay. it. Thank you. Obviously, I've got the request for me to sign the letter that you don't have for residents to show our support, which I am quite happy to do. But the actual resolution we're going, to, we're going to need to vote on the actual agenda item. So, if there anybody would like to, Jane is here in case there are any questions that you would like to ask of Shared Future, who are the facilitators of the whole process. <clears throat> I just want to say that we, we are now talking in the planning committee about the potential impacts of um, a number of these changes, including um, what might come out of the climate jury. So I think it's, personally it's really timely that we actually get our backs behind this and make sure that people know that we're really going to support it and that we're going to. Um, you know, we've, we've seen the projections as well, and um, we're, we're going to do all that we can if it ends up being on the shoulders of the Australian Town Council. But um, I think that's what we should commit to doing. I think it's a really, really interesting and important initiative. If only to be Again, to learn by the partnership. Um, very nice to get to up to 40 people spending hours uh, listening to experts, as Rob said, um, discussing the, the impact of global issues on the local, you know, the local environment area. Um, really like it because it is a ground up kind of initiative um, rather than you know, us trying to decide what people want in need. Um, and I can think. Um, it's the least we can do is pledge to consider the outcomes. So I'd like to propose after show I'm spoken. that we accept the proposal. Okay. I don't really have much else to add to that to be honest. <laughs> the after support obviously as the new department. So I'd say um kind of legitimizes this whole process. Um and I think this is a really amazing opportunity for our community and I would highly urge anyone that wants to be involved to sign up to it because yeah the fact that you've got that opportunity to get that expert input and then be part of potentially resolutions that are going to be part of the decision making process to improve community resilience for years to come is like pretty 
pretty big. So yeah, I think we should be doing this. And I'm certainly going to talk about these proposals because yeah, this is a no-brainer for me. We need to get behind this and we should have more support. Okay, Tom. Yeah, I, I, very interesting. Thank you. Uh, I was um, interested to hear you say about the, the bias in favor of the youth. Yeah. I think one of the things that the main advocate of the council was trying to get across was this was why the youth council, because to come, what a kind of change being one of the big things that will affect the you know, young people, not younger than us, especially. So that that's kind of that we're in full agreement there, wrong, which is nice enough. Um, the other thing, and by sheer coincidence, I was as Ian will tell you, I was I was interested in uh, or suggesting that there should be something at a community network level of the community area partnership level. I had suggested this before. Uh, would it be to um, Adopt it or come up with a thing for policies for across the community of the area. Uh, uh, planning, and I'm interested to hear that the planning committee is considering this now. But this was from uh, one of the reasons why this came to mind for me recently or, or is there's presently a um, planning application for approximately 220 acres of solar panels in Camry Water, and there's uh, an application for approximately 10 acres at Whitman Sea of uh, solar panels. So, uh, obviously, these are commercial uh, applications, but rather than having dealing with bees in isolation. It seems to me that there, there should be some sort of. I, I was would have been would be slightly favourable towards the community area partnership taking this up and formulating policies across the area that we could put to common council for dealing with these these type of. I'm not saying I'm for the the, the children from the Eagles or I'm against it. I'm saying there is. There is an application. These applications do come up every now and again, rather than dealing with an isolation of a uh, very wide uh, approach. Hey, you're from Palmstock Parish Council, so wouldn't say it's actually it's actually Mount Church. Oh, it's Mount Church. Yeah, I, I never saw where the area split there. So uh, most people are. Yeah, yeah. it's actually Mount Mount Church. So we're not, right. Okay. So you wouldn't get to see that as far as. Are you still, I, I forget which council you're still on from. On the well, well, you're still on from. Oh, right. So you will be there. Fair enough. Yeah. That's where I was going. Okay. I think Kevin started to move to start, maybe. Or... I just respond to Tom's Oh, you could start with one, please. Specifically about the community area network panel, whatever the new name of it is. I'm sorry, Ray, I don't know. Um, they're actually a partner in the partnership of BCP. So they are inherently part of that process and are represented in the oversight panel, specifically relating to the final jury, which is. So that that kind of decision making um, overlap is already enmeshed into that because they are part of that partnership. So I'm assuming that, well, I would hope that they would also be supportive of any recommendations that come out of the jury. That's what I hope. Yeah. Sorry, Kevin, to come. <laughs> well, I'm a dreadful drowner of puppies and particular kittens. <laughs> and I. I'm not convinced by the, the price. I'm, I'm sorry, that's how you make your living. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced by uh, community juries, uh, democrat, democratic selection, all of this. Because basically, people who want to be on this will have short barbers and try and deny it. And a lot of people will get a letter saying, please deny it, and that'll go straight to the bin. Also, I'm not at all convinced that this. Carries a massive amount of weight. Um, maybe it will, maybe it will. But we all know that uh, one of the things that have been suggested is that we allow the car parks at Crooklets and Summerlees to basically return to nature as a form of flood defense moving forward. And that is entirely, in my opinion, in the gift of Common Council. And if we say to people, this may be in your gift, and they Get gung ho about it, and then Cornwall Council decided there was no way to do it. 
because we make too much money out of this car park, then that really defeats the entire project. So I wish the project well, but in my cynical puppy kitten, brownie kicking, whatever, I shall be upset. Do you want to respond to that or? Um, like yeah, hi. Sorry. Kick <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could have we could have long discussions for days uh, um, um, on on this subject. Absolutely, I think I think the important thing is that so, so we're a not for profit company, um, and we do this to ensure that people have a voice. Now, if there's an issue, whether it's climate change or not, that's happening in an area, then I think the best thing you can do is actually talk to people and get them on board and ask their opinions. Um, and if there's no promises beforehand, what, what, what you can never say to somebody is that every recommendation that, 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 that you come up with as, as, a, as a well informed group after 30 hours, mm -hmm. we're going to follow through with, but that these recommendations will, will be suggested and put forward. Um, uh, we are representative, uh, we, you know, we, we, we will have 40 people from the age of 16 and we also because of the youth duty as well we're including it, people imbued from seven years old. Um, and it does create a really good public dialogue. Um, and, and so, uh, and what we also do is we encourage people. So on the, on the um, one of the questions that we ask people that we stratify from is whether, uh, how concerned they are about climate change. Um, because we, 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 we want people from all sectors of society. So people, there's quite a few people who don't, who aren't as concerned about climate change as other people and see that see that will rise. So it's important to, for us to have those voices in the room as well. So that then, then any recommendations that come out of this will, will, will be sort of measured. And also it gives people a chance to sit down and, and actually have a discussion with people who might not necessarily see things their way. Um, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I, I don't want to say sort of sounds of battle. <laughs> okay. Um, I think to respond to you, Gary, I, I kind of share your, I, I remember, I think you, put, you sent an email around saying, you know, that central government, the EA formal council are, you know, dereliction of duty in some respects, it's a global problem and it needs, Big joined up thinking, but this is our only game. So if we don't support this, there's nothing. We've got no skin in the game at all. And that's not meant to be derogatory towards you. That, that's just a comment on, I'm not going to name them, but our government who can find money for many, many things, but something as big as, you know, the Leviathan on the horizon, they've thrown it out to the little people, so to speak. So this is our game. And for me, like I said, I will sign the letter. And I, I think we should support the pro our full weight behind it because it is the only game in town. No. Well, it, just to respond to your point, Kevin, about um, the legitimacy. Of course, sharp elbow people are going to try and force their, their way to the front. It happens in, in all forms of, of engagement. Um, the more sharp edged people end up also being able to get to the front of the queue to be a councillor as well. Um, whatever area you look at, some people are more capable. The idea behind this process though is that it is, we do everything we can to enable anybody who wants to take part to be able to take part. And I think that's something that doesn't always happen. Um, and we support them and finance it and provide all the support structures that, that will allow people who often, whose voices are often not heard. And the other thing is that there are four people who are selected, but we expect to have many more than that apply, just based on the experiences of, of Shared Future and Soil Fishing Foundation. We would expect to have several hundred people apply, and then 40 people are selected from that randomly, but to fit the demographics. So there's an algorithm that is used uh, so to fit the, the demographics uh, of, of our local area. So it, no system, you know, nothing is going to be perfect, but this is a good system and it is recognised as such. And that's why community juries and community assemblies, uh, have, or citizen juries and citizen assemblies, um, uh, uh, have a lot of support now. Right, I think we've got a proposal that has been set late, so... 
Um, before I go on it. Yeah, um, I, I would I'd like to take from Kevin, uh, sorry, Kevin uh, Cole. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy to support this, but it, I'm just concerned, Sherry's concerned that we're going to have to teach. That's well, well, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. 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 That's why I was yeah. hoping that the community network panel would, yeah. uh, would, would, would uh, uh, have actually been pushing this for some time, uh, that it, it would pick it up and, and help has it. Well, I'm sure that's probably a conversation that can be had going forward, but for now, <coughs> I think we debate it and that's so I'm going to move to a vote. All in favour? Again, abstain. Okay. Uh, eleven. Consider an invitation from Cornwall Council to review oh, yeah. to review renewals to public space protection orders. Dots. Peter, the boy. Well, I I looked at the attached documents earlier on today when I was preparing for this meeting, and I didn't make any sense out of it right? because it seems to have got um, a proposed job restriction. On Crookless car park, which doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I've asked, I have actually been in touch with the dog protection officer, um, who has got no knowledge of this proposal at all. So I don't think there's enough information for this council to do justice to this at the end of item. And I don't know what the deadlines Cornwall Council are asking for, but I'd suggest that we, if we can. Uh, table it, I believe, on the table for the next meeting. It might not be a good idea, or perhaps we seek some further information on the proposed edition. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so to, to answer your question, uh, Councillor Boyd, um, the, the deadline is the 15th of August. The map that accompanied the email from Cornwall Council were the suggestions from Councillor Good. I should have made that clear, but I think it's said later, I didn't apologize. So, Councillor Good had suggested some uh, revised areas. Would you like to talk Yeah, so um, basically, if you read through the current schedule um, of the front protection orders, it's throughout the whole of Cornwall, it's basically play places um, where dogs have to be kept on leads. And we don't seem to have anywhere we've got listed within the schedule um, for reviews, which I thought was a bit peculiar. Um, and on top of that, uh, I have actually got an actual video I can share being attacked by a dog recently. Um, directly outside the school gates, uh, where all the uh, some children came out. Uh, basically, uh, we've got an interesting scenario where obviously, like that school specifically has a pack which is really well used for dog walkers, but then often off off the lead, where the the, the gate is directly outside, like directly on that path, which leads that you've got this conflict of small kids basically coming out and often it's very occasional it's been like my personal experience in that specific location I've had probably three in the past year but three dogs running at me or my small child in that specific location where there's a school doesn't seem very acceptable so this is why I decided to go okay well why don't we review what because we've got no spaces on this list, we should probably just have a sign check to make sure there are spaces that we feel like we should be having some dogs on these. And immediately outside the schools, I felt was a fair assumption to have. Uh, and the place of the car park is basically the skate park. Um, because, like, again, maybe we should have skate park, you know, like, because at the moment, especially because it's school and castle land at this very moment in time, I don't think that that piece of land specifically should have dogs on. And we can have you know, our own signs up saying there's dogs in our parks and things like that. But the whole point of this order is that there's this allows it to be enforceable. So really, we should be having any of the play parks that we've got, They're like especially at least specifically the areas where you know we've got the actual kids' equipment should have either no dogs or dogs on leads. Um, and I was generally just surprisingly reading through their documentation like we can find in those spaces. 
So the uh, parts on the map that I've shared with you are basically, um, there's a bit of runoff from Stratton School because they're their car park, but they've also got the bike trail, which obviously again has quite a few people coming in and out of, and there's bikes pelting down, which obviously ends up with a couple of dogs chasing occasionally. Um, around the front of the secondary school, which I think might be quite optional. The secondary school does have quite a big pathway in front of their area, like the car park of their area. Um, there's the view primary school, which I think is probably the one that's got, is the most acceptable at the moment, again, because of where the path is, the leisure path conflict, uh, and then the skate park. But if there's, I don't know how you'd like to chair this part, if you want to go through the concept of adding some spaces in the town to the list first and then decide which spaces i don't know how you'd like to <laughs> try and do that basically like, well, conceptually do we want to add any spaces first of all to the list well, where... my, my first one is if things like now but that would have been a really good thing to have county consultation on the town and we could have actually asked people it's unfortunate you've mentioned it now and what on the town team? Uh, yeah. Well, the town team is very specific to town centre location. Well, yeah. A lot of these aren't covered by the town team. Right. Like, it's all like strap, like the, uh, you know, going as far as, but not even the um, Broadcoast Hill is covered. So yeah. I guess, as I said, I think fundamentally first is, do we want to conceptually have anything, decide that, and then basically decide, okay, let's nominate some spaces potentially. You know, I'm thinking about something dark. Like to see the video. <laughs> I was thinking about something dark. He said earlier in reference to the beaches, especially at low tide. You can walk onto Summerish Beach and see a sign telling you the rules. If you go around the corner of Cross Rock, you're in a different rule zone altogether without being told. Now I know that I'm a local. Do the tourists know that? <laughs> so it seems utterly bizarre. Now that I think about it, that we've got three beaches with three sets of rules, and you walk onto a beach and follow the set of rules that you enter, never knowing it's like going from a 20 mile an hour zone to a 60 mile an hour zone without a sign to tell you, or vice versa. So when, now that you've mentioned it, and I think about it, I'm like, well, of course, there's dogs running around with no type doing whatever, because the dogs don't know, and quite possibly a lot of the owners don't know. But I'm not going to suggest we stick signs up on Cross Rock. It should be a blanket ban. It should be the same policy and across the entire bay. Well, I'm not necessarily saying no dog, but with the same rule set across all three beaches would be the only way to make it in any way enforceable. Because if a dog warning came up to me and said, Oh, you've got your dog off the leash there, and I looked at my watch and went, It was nice out there, and I asked him, and he went, Well, not on this beach. The last sign I saw said I could. It's a, it's a very interesting point, Darcy. Um, John. Yeah, I think um, Katie's suggestions here for the primary school, secondary school, St. Patrick's Nursery, and the playgrounds are really, really good because at the moment, although there are spaces on our land for the playgrounds, that's not enforceable. So that, this just overlaps formal council with what we would expect people attending the play parts to do because they've read the signs but this would actually mean that if someone was like breaking that then it was it would be impossible because we're not able to do that so yeah i think that's common sense and obviously most people that pick up their children from schools if they have a dog it would be on the lead anyway but like you said there's people that are using those as amenity like pathways at similar times and that can be a problem if you're not a lover of dogs or if the dog is not a lover of people or those kind of those intersections can be problematic so i think yeah really common sense solution <laughs> this was the first concept it makes sense to me yes i agree with sean and katie i think if we haven't got any any areas this designation in and around those pathways then we should do and this looks like a great place to start it seems to me it's all going to be a bit experimental if, if we don't really have sufficient enforcement on the beaches then it's a lot to expect our dog warden in his one one and a half hour session per week to, to cover these areas as well 
but I guess there'll be signs and let's see how it goes. I would like to see some kind of feedback from the job warden to see how many, you know, how many times he's or she is issuing, you know, penalties or whatever to see what they get to and where we get some feedback on where the hotspots are. Mm -hmm. um, and if these are on their round, then, then great. Um, so I'd, I'd be all for it. Let's give it a go. Yeah, and this is a consultation. <laughs> and with the deadline that we've got, this is, you know, if nobody else has got any other suggestions, then I think there's a minimum we should put these in. Mm -hmm. And then if anybody else is in, <clears throat> Above things, and presumably that consultation is still a, still an open process for another few days for individuals to put uh, other suggestions. And thank you, Casey, for doing the work for you. See, um, from a school perspective, uh, uh, we already have acted over time to change, for instance, road conditions around school, which is perfectly reasonable for the safety of. Uh, individuals going there at that particular time. But now, it seems appropriate to me for us to extend those kind of the sort of safety measures that uh, Katie is proposing to school areas. And also, if Cornwall Council, through our recommendation, does make that a case, then that empowers the schools to communicate with their parents to say during these particular times, or there are these particular restrictions, which would help reinforce locals taking note of those particular circumstances. So from my perspective, looking at it from a general school perspective, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, you think it's nothing? <laughs> I don't really think about it this time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This is an area that I have some understanding of. I write for a newspaper that has its main readership as people who show up their dogs. So I do know a bit about dog law. There is an overarching law that owners are required to keep their dogs under control at all times. And if a dog comes running up to you, even, it ha even if it has a waggy tail, but if it comes up to you and you don't like dogs, then that dog is de facto uh, dangerously out of control because it's a little bit like um, it's a little bit like me giving somebody a compliment and they taking it as sexual abuse. The dog is the, the is the person who's affected, not the person who says the words. And it's the dog coming up. The dog might be happy and jolly, and the owner might believe it to be. But if the person is affected, you know, terroristly, and it's de facto dangerously out of control. So. That's, that's the overarching thing. But in terms of, of this one, I don't particularly like, um, you know, blanket restrictions because as, you know, Mr. James has pointed out, they're routinely ignored. Um, you know, I don't see a huge amount of problems with people exercising their dog at seven o'clock in the morning down on Sunday's beach. Um, if they wander across on the Brooklyn's beach, I still really don't see such a huge problem because it's seven o'clock in the morning. So I would be inclined to look at perhaps restrictions during term times, perhaps make a, a suggestion that uh, dogs can be kept on leads during term times or during pick up and drop off times at the schools rather than just a, a blanket restriction in, in those particular areas. As far as the, the skate park and the play parks are concerned, I think it is a no brain. I think that should have always been done. And indeed, it always was. There used to be signs on the play park and the skate park saying no dogs. Um, so just in terms of time, obviously, remember, you have after school clubs. We've also got the free night practice program, which is also held at school often. And also we do have a um, few football club, which obviously has kids throughout, like they have, you know, Saturday morning, like things. So it's it's not as easy to say term times. I mean, the nursery, for example, uh, is half eight till six. And that's, that's every day apart from Christmas. Like, so yeah. it's, I, conceptually, I can definitely understand that. Um, I guess you could say before 6 a.m. and after 10 p.m. at night or something. <laughs> like, just, like, make sure there's a pre-school 
clubs, school clubs, etc., all covered, um, or you just simply might just say on these very specific roads, um, and just it, and it's not saying banning dogs; it's literally just saying they just go on leaks. Yeah. It is, yeah. So, yeah. The, the issue is always under. I mean, I, I don't now, at the moment, but for the last two or three years, I've coached rugby. And before every match, we had to do a dog sweep sweep across the pitch. So those kids didn't tackle each other and end up in the dog post. And you would think any sane human being would look at the sports pitch and go, I'm not going to let my dog up a lead here. And as it does, the toilet, I'm going to figure out. But they, some just don't. And it, it comes down to it's got somebody, you know, the enforceability of human behavior again, isn't it? Go on, Doug. I think on the gate of the football club, there used to be, there was a sign. There is. No dogs by order of the FA. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Well, why is that? Well, it's their own grounds. Because, it's, because it's you, can't, you, can't, you can't solve stupid jargon no. at the end of the day, I'm afraid. I tried to tell them that the rugby club do the same way, but I wouldn't have signed that. Yeah, you, no, you're correct. And that's kind of the point I'm making is, I mean, this is worth a try, but yeah. I was just thinking, I agree with all the school stuff, definitely, but I think we've always got the risk that people just ignore it. And there's kind of a general rule that if you act more rules, people will just blame their company, like, I don't know, I'm just going to ignore it. So doing term times and yeah, 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 if you, yeah, keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, like the beaches, stay confusing. Okay. So, um, I guess then that there could be an option here where tweets that people want to make. Uh, you could basically say, um, what is it when you give someone responsibility? Delegated. Was that sorry? Delegated or not? Yeah, but so, but like, um, so what we could do. Is there's obviously basically saying like play parks and the schools and nurseries, I guess. And if there's specific tweets, that basically, if I'm missing something off this list, then we can add it basically. So I don't know if there's any other nurseries, for example, or if there's um, any other schools that are like Mr. Stratton or, or whatever. So there might be other points, um, or any, of course, the extra, the extra small playground as well. Um, basically, to be able to have that work to add those extra bits that haven't still got them on that map. Uh, but it sounds like conceptually we're all on the same page. So maybe you should. I don't know how to arrange the proposal for this, so let's like, try and make some words for it. Yeah, I, I, I just want to be a little bit cautious about this. Um, I, I, I don't think. The agenda I gave for the information that's on the table, if I'm honest, I only have one image that's showing group that's down Oh, you've got one. No, I only got like one for show group that's down But anyway, never mind. But what I want to say is, is that the Dogs on Beaches is the biggest public consultation exercise that Cornwall Council does, and it has to always has the biggest response, and people are always incredibly emotional. No matter which side of the fence they might be, whether they're pro dogs or anti dogs or whatever. No, I, I don't want to say that council his proposals aren't without merit, and they seem to have chimed merit around the table, so I accept that. But to propose this without any consultation to the public of view, when we've got ourselves forward as a council that wants to consult on this stuff, seems a bit odd. Um, and I just think that. If it has merit, perhaps we need to put it in the public domain um, and give the public a bit of time to respond just to sense check that this is what they want from us because we don't know where they are. Yeah, that was kind of what I addressed with my first point was it's a shame this did not go up with one of our former but John. What's the time limit on this? How much longer have we got to actually? Still okay, so it's not, not enough to do that. It doesn't involve beaches as well. Mm -hmm. so beach, so this yeah. is not a beach. So yeah. I just feel like, in terms of common sense, I don't know many parents, even dog owning parents, that would be like, oh, I just want my dog to run loose outside the school because they would have the common sense mm -hmm. to want to put their 
Which so some many of them they, they, yeah, <laughs> because they would want to keep other people's children safe and, and their own. So I don't, I don't know. It doesn't feel like this is incredibly problematic, but it, it just seems common sense to me. But yeah. <laughs> Could I make a suggestion that perhaps we go with the play parts? Um, as being made no dogs and the rest we put out consultation with the town. Yeah, I'm having a play part from the brain. Yeah. I strongly <laughs> believe that the schools are also a non brainer considering yeah. how many times and video evidence I have of being attacked by dogs outside that very school. Like it just seems yeah, like just literally outside the sites like the schools, like and nurseries. Okay, groups. <laughs> also, this is our views to consultation. So, yeah. so the only deadline is that our views need to be in by 15th of August. Yeah. The existing orders, of which we have none, will expire on the 15th of October, and then it looks like they're reviewed every three years. So it doesn't really say that we can't get a new area put on to that system in yeah. into that place. And anyway, it sounds like we have till the 15th of October before if formal council could turn around and say, okay, we'd like to take you up on your you know your suggestions. And in that time, we've consulted the public, they hate the idea, then we can also actually we've changed our mind. But at least we need to, if we want everything done, we need to get it in like 15th of August. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, to me, the, the outside school is as much of an overlayer as parks. It's the same, you've got no children in an area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the park should be no dogs, and outside of school should be dogs only. Yeah. That seems really common sense. Mm -hmm. So I will propose then that we uh, submit a response to the consultation uh, to add no dogs on the playgrounds of view. And then in front of the various schools and nurseries to have dogs on these. And the skate park. And the skate park, yeah. Okay, all in favour. Again, you can walk in there. Ah, I'm staying. Okay. Um, oh, thank you. Well, I think you will see an update on the wheel sports project and to consider and use the beach office equipment for the youth facility to strengthen the funding applications. In the interim, consider providing access to the beach office for the view of war event in September. Apologies, it's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Um, so, um, so first of all, just in terms of an update, so progress has been made um, from a legal perspective, and we're into final draft now, which will then be transferred over to a lease ready to seal, which I'm hoping will go as well come back for September, which would be really good. It seems we'll be on track with that. Um, the ecology report for the entire site has been updated and that's been received and the utility survey will be undertaken in two weeks time in August. So essentially that means that everything we need in terms of going out to tender is coming together aside from the ground investigation work which has been finalised and has to be tendered itself just due to the technical nature of the work. Um, and we're still requesting mobilisation for this September for that to take place, which um, would be really good. Um, in the process of going through um, the heads of towns with the lawyers and officers at Cornwall Council, we've been advised for, we've been advised that there's archaeological potential um, for Bronze Age barrel, barrows, which is apparently a burial mounds. Mm -hmm. um, on the site above the existing skate park, which is not something we anticipated. Um, so because of that, I've commissioned a heritage impact assessment, which is something which is sort of basically a report on the likelihood of that actually being the case. So it doesn't at this stage that there is no kind of definitive yes, there is, it's just there's potential for that to be there based on records. So once the heritage impact assessment is undertaken, it will give a greater detail into the likelihood of that. And it also means that we'll have to have a watching brief from an archaeologist 
on site at any point where we dig, which is the same as what we've got with the storm tower. So it, it does add some time, um, obviously, to the lengthy process, and obviously then there's an additional cost to having that in access we've done and a watching group on the project on the phone. Um, and we're still looking uh, to finalise tender um, in September, assuming obviously all the other final conditions and things are in place, which some are actually out of our control. Um, funding wise, and that kind of leads us on to um, the items on the agenda. Um, so two minute beach clean, surrender their lease to the beach office down at Crookfoots, which I think everybody is aware of. Um, so myself and Ian have gone through the different funding sources that we're looking into and obviously having had other conversations and from experience, we feel that a greater activities programme um, would be beneficial to this project in being successful for the funding, which is obviously similar to what we've done previously. And so we're seeking to put forward this building would be as part of this project renovated to become a youth facility for the town and also to obtain funding for a youth worker for one year who would be based on that site, which I hope is in line with the desires of the council in previous conversations. Um, so those are the options that obviously we're looking for that to be approved. Um, and there's also been a request um, as well from Viewed It Ward to make use of the building um, for three days in September this year, which previously they couldn't have done because of the lease in case of too much beach clean, but that's obviously been revoked. So there's kind of, they're not linked, obviously, they're entirely separate options, but they are two options on the table, um, both which will hopefully support. Yeah, just just want to ask a bit more about the uh, you said about um, that office being part of sort of the new facility. Yeah, any more ideas about what that would actually be? Which is being open to any for anyone to use, or to be run by? So I think like lend or have them been sort of in getting involved in that discussion. Yes, I think that was part of the thinking is that we would approach them as part of the application as well to strengthen the program. So the building itself is split into two. So you've got the large section to the left, which obviously needs an work, and then the right hand side, which is kind of storing at the moment. So the plan thoughts were that the right hand side could be a small office where the youth work could be based. And be on site when the facility was open so then it could be a space where obviously we would obtain the funding we would commission the works to be done so that it would be improved and obviously it needs complete cutting ripping out um, and then a space where blend could use that for themselves and be based and other new facilities could go there but it has to be manned obviously at all times it couldn't be a facility that's left open and um, but it just kind of ties in nicely with aside from the capital project, that we're looking to actually enhance the use facilities in other ways as well, and obviously in the inclement weather and things like that. So, and providing things just like free internet access, and so mm -hmm. we don't you know, <laughs> sit outside our buildings. <laughs> so we would facilitate, but we wouldn't be running it. No. No. We would have funding, I would hope, for one year, and then after that, it would then be a decision of whether we continued that and obviously have to find funds for elsewhere and um, it's proven successful elsewhere in the county so we obviously talk to other offices and things and it's something that other people have done and so we felt that it was just really timely once we found out about the lease being revoked that it's something we could do. So we say we've got funding for you, would that be from the funding for the state park? So we would build that in that the funding wouldn't just be for the capital project it's just the skate park that would fund the activity program, which is renovations of the building, a youth worker, and then probably also some a year's worth of activity activities, basically something along those lines. That's what I think we need to put forward. Fairly similar to what they've done down in Canada with respect to 
is, is pretty be very successful. So um, I'm not sure a shot after you were back here. You were out in another shoot out in January. Yeah, Sean and Kevin. So firstly, I think the options one A and one B are fantastic and completely in line with our aims and objectives as a council. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Would the youth worker be full time? So you're anticipating like a full time person. So rather than so you could have it open. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that's within our yeah. hands completely, yeah. and it all will come down to how much the capital. Build program costs yeah. and how much then we need as an activities program. So, just for instance, we've got a fifty thousand pounds work activities for the compass point project yeah. on a three hundred thousand pound grant. So yeah. it's just making sure the balance is yeah. there, and okay. um, in one piece, the other essentially. Completely. Okay. My other question was about the project impact assessment. Um, mm -hmm. like from I'm guessing you've already. Have you already got the contract or are you putting out a tender or something like what what kind of detail is that going to come in are they going to be like it's an live, extensive live our stuff and like scans and yeah. okay so yeah. like literally checking the land floor kind of submerged yeah like whatever so i was okay. advised that Very because of the sand build up of the downs yes yeah. more likely that things would have survived rather than Play and things like yeah. that. So that's okay. why it was raised as a concern. Yeah. Um, but until that assessment's done, we don't really know. But they are extensive. But it's a full assessment. It's yeah. not like an initial. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's gone out. So I'm tendered already. So I'm waiting for it. Brilliant. To come back. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm very familiar with those buildings. I used to be a deck chairman many years ago before I started kicking puppies. Um, they are they are not brilliant buildings. Um, we call it the beach office. The beach office is only a tiny little bit of it. Most of it used to be a, a big old toilet block. And to the best of my recollection, I think I could probably just kick one of those walls in. Um, are, we, are we sure? Are we, are we sure the best option isn't just to demolish it and, uh, and start again? And um, we can't demolish it, unfortunately. Um, we've reviewed it with our facilities manager, and he is comfortable that the structure of the building is sound, as is the roof, which was our biggest concern. So obviously, don't want to do all the work on the roofs first. Um, but internally, you're right, it needs an awful lot of work, and it was obviously previously quite a convenience, so there's a lot to do there. But with the funding in place, there's no reason why that that couldn't be done. Um, just a question when you say you, mm -hmm. what age are you thinking? Like, these homes are that age bracket of you know, the kids used to be are you just thinking 25, having someone in there that can help with homeless young people getting jobs, finding somewhere to live, like having a hub for young people. But making sure that it's not just one selection of young people that are already part of a of a group such as blend that's great for them to have somewhere but to make use of that space to help young people of all ages not just so the demographic that we normally use for funding applications is up to 25 and um, just based on national statistics from the area so it would fall up to that age bracket of up to 25 and it's within our prerogative of what we stipulate so if those conversations want to be had then you know, it will depend on what each funding application is looking for so obviously we have to tailor it to obviously get the money that's you know the whole point of the process so um but from our experience everything will direct to the activities program rather than the capital spend so that's where this idea kind of fits really. Thank you. Um, yeah, so like I'm incredibly keen on it. Um, so you know, I believe like that, yeah, young people tend to, the definition has changed quite a bit. So I think like up to 32 now is potentially, yeah, I know. Um, because, especially because in terms of demographics, uh, in terms of people being able to get housing and stuff nowadays, 
it's not until like you're 35 plus that you start to be able to like, get a mortgage and things mm -hmm. like that if you're able to um keep getting careers and things so especially for university, university returning people still having that option i think to go to like at least like 28 30 i think would be ideal for me personally um the thing that i was going to raise was then is it definitely worth putting this onto a properties committee um meeting at some point knowing that the okay this is a building that we might have to start to manage more hands-on than originally expected because i think originally <clears throat> it was going to be the two unit foundation that they're going to do up for the practical rent and now we've lost that which means you know painting it getting the gutters working you know everything like that which we've been on the dream for a long time so um and then in which cases they're actually i think we need to do sooner rather than later then for properties that can just come out from that because you know obviously getting yes. the money is going to be yeah. quite a long time so i mean if you don't mind and um, so myself and steve have already visited and yeah. made a list of the things that initially you were doing to make sure the building structure is okay mm -hmm. so that will be happening and will be reported from services manager and oversee it. one of the first things he's doing is the windows, which you see need replacing urgently, um, and painting. And um, in terms of internally, it's not something I don't think we would look to do until we have a definitive use of what the building is going to be. But certainly from the outside, then that will be the Steve to manage, and so that will go through to oversight. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, obviously, but yes, we're where we are going with some of the changes proposed the other week for last month. But I, mean, I think for those of us that sat in on that town team meeting today, it, it wasn't a surprise to find that you know teenagers particularly were calling for a space. And we said, you know, can we find a project to launch very quickly? And we now have an opportunity to tie that into an area where we've already got the power exchange dealing with the, the 18 to 13 year 30 year olds uh or 32 it might be now engaged in those kinds of things, the more artsy crafty kind of things. If you've got a skate park down there for that demographic, having a youth centre in that area, which also ties in the surf club in that area, we do have a very good opportunity to provide a lot of youth work with a youth worker, with somebody who can give the advice and all of that lot, in an area where there are a lot of youth are going to be congregating, so to speak. So to me, you know, it's a nice bet. And, I think we should be, you know, look at it very seriously. Hear more of it, yeah? What did I say? Perhaps the... Yeah. Oh, sorry, I saw it. Yeah, Peter, you were... You were right. Two of them. I thought... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, 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 I'm all for this project, Mike, as you know. Yeah. Yeah, in, in fact, I did... A little bit of pre election stuff on it, which you probably remember. Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. The only thing that I do want to say about this is that the scale of the site has changed dramatically because of the fact that there's a critical cable that runs through it. We all know that around this mm. cable. I'm not convinced that the general public have viewed know the scale of the site that we're proposing, and I know that there will be kickback on that, and I think that we need to get that out into the public domain. PDQ mm -hmm. and get that dealt with because I, what I don't want to do is for us to end up in a situation where we go in all guns blazing, only to find out we get such a strong negative public reaction to the scale of the site that we end up having fail to address in a timely way the challenges that I know we'll receive. Um, so I think this was brought up at last school council yeah. um, as well. So there are plans in place, but not hiding this information. The scale is actually, when you look at it in terms of the physical land, um, because of the section that's not going to be built upon, there isn't a significant difference in terms of the land that's going to be worked upon. In terms of the entire site, yes, that's obviously bigger, but there is a significant strip running through the middle. I'm reluctant at this stage to do any significant communication is until we've received the final report, I can't definitively say that it can go ahead because we haven't had the utilities report back 
which made tell us that there's a main gas main running through the site. And if there's a bronze age barrow, we can't do <laughs> anything. So, so yeah. you know, there's, a, there's obviously still things to come before that takes place. It, it's kind of like a triangle thing. We could put all of these comms out there, get one hell of a kickback, and then find there's a bronze age barrow there, and we must set the entire term for no reason because we can't build there anyway. So it's while it's a valid point, and I think Philippa emailed me at some point last month as well. We do have plans to get it out in the park house, get it out on comms, put some boards up down there so the users can actually come along and look at what we're planning to do. But it's okay, it's timing is key. And yes, we don't want to leave it too late, but at the same time, do we want to pour an apalm on a barbecue when we think we're having the barbecue? Well, so just to come back for a council that has set store out on communication and and actually consulting the public, I, I know now that we will get a strong reaction to this. And I think it'd be far better to start to deal with it now rather than leave it too late. Don't get wrong, I'm not, I'm not against it. I'll dig it up tomorrow. Yeah. Down to me. No, it's not a problem. I'm not a problem. No, but, but, but I think we need to prepare ourselves for a challenge that is down the road. Mm -hmm. But I think once, sorry, Carry I think on. if, once the data comes out, which I have in front of me, many, many maps which I've had commissioned and now received, um, comparing the two sites, once that goes into the public's view and the explanation behind that is put forward, I think it's clear that we're not then taking acres and acres of the dams up. Um, but we have it has to land correctly and we have to have the full facts in front of us which we don't have and we can only do this as quickly as i can commission and get people to cite to do those things by all means we can communicate this tomorrow should you wish but you won't have the full facts in front going out to the public yeah um just to say we have already had a major consultation on the downs and it was like 76.28 percent of people supported the idea of enhancement and expansion of the skate park. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, yeah. And then also like 14% uh, thought it was supportive of it, didn't necessarily feel it was the correct place, and over 8% felt like it was completely opposed to the idea. So 76.28% being supportive of that at that site yeah. suggests that we should be following through as forward as we can so we've got some so we know we can build on that site basically yeah i mean my thought as i said last time is based on that we asked the people do you want to expand it at that site we're slightly moving the piece of land we're going to use but to my mind we are still on that site if you build a new building up at a school that was 50 yards away from the school you wouldn't call it a new school you would say it was part of the school and that's effectively what we're doing Sorry, Boris Johnson, Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Boris. But um, it was. Yeah. I, so I think we have actually received the update on the as the agenda item. Um, but what we haven't dealt with is the use of the the uh, what's the old beach office. Using, yeah. Consider use and access to the beach office for viewed at war event in September. So I think we've received the update. Yeah. And the future use should be perhaps put on the conference committee for. Properly and so on, but in the interim, I'd like to fully support the use of the building for a beautiful war like it was before when it was the, the last um, yeah. anniversary. It was coming in the 50 sometime. Yeah, anyway, um, you know, I think Mrs. Robertson needs, needs to know that the council is supportive of perhaps loaning that building once again because planning does need to be done, and you know. If it's an appropriate time to the side. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll deal with the view that war one. Yeah, so if you, if you propose we get the new that I'll yes. definitely get all yeah. in favor. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. That is used now. Okay, cool. So the second one is and the rest of it is the update. And we've received the update yeah. undoubtedly. The properties committee will discuss um, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> If, uh, yeah, I think for now I need to remain on the site. The building is structuring. Yeah. And um, if we're attaching the use of it to the real sports facility, 
that probably still remains as part of the women's sports a working group of the quorum. Until we sorry, I can see you went next. Um Kevin. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. Um we so we haven't voted on yet to approve the use of the jobs at the inclusion of funding applications, which I think is the most critical part of this. Yeah. Um, so we need to be committing to do that so yeah. that those funding bids can include that potential yeah. for that to happen. So I would like to propose that we accept option one A as well. I would second that. I'll go to Kevin and then we'll go. Um I'm happy to to vote for inclusion of, of this into the into the funding bid. I think that those buildings should be used for uh, the use of the town. I think that would be a very good thing, as, as the mayor has said. Um, one point in response to what Peter was saying, and in support of what Peter was saying, we may have had a consultation some time ago. We may not be providing everything. We may be putting everything out openly as we we think should be. But I think we need to go even further, go the extra mile to make people of you aware that things have changed. And they didn't just change today, they changed last month. And the proposal for the skate park is materially different. And I think the optics of waiting until all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed before we do any proper cons on this is, is terrible. And people will come back and say, well, when was this decided? I didn't know. And if we say, well, it was decided three months ago, that is not going to look right. So I would I would support B um, in, in getting comms out, even with provisos and caveats. Because I think uh, I think the town will react. Yeah. Just to like put a Going back to that point, um, people know I'd like to vote and move this agenda right along. When it comes to like a planning application, it's kind of like strange territory when you see an indicative plan for something without an actual like resolved, fully formed plan because actually your hackles are up and you get the idea in your head that that is the thing. And then actually, sometimes when it comes to planning, it's like, oh, turns out that wasn't possible. So now we're looking at something else entirely. I think in this instance, we need to know that that potential option is possible, like legally, like archaeologically, environmentally, before we show that potential. Because otherwise, you're just literally drawing something on a napkin and going, it might be that, but it might not. And that is very much like, the very much the wrong way to show a design concept because people fill in the gaps with their imagination and we need to make sure that this is even feasible before we go forward like so we do do process and legality of this so okay. yeah right we're going to go to the vote and the proposal was to support using that building as part of the youth facility in the wider field sports facility so all in favor that is Unanimous. Splendid. Still on you, Frankie. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thank you, Gary. To receive an update and financial report in the company on the project, we consider the recommendation to keep the existing campsite drawing in situ, make safe, and so the future use of the flag pole is located next to the storm tower. Okay, um, another wordy one, sorry. There's a few changes um, since the paper was issued, just in terms of the update. Um, just bear with me a second. So, <clears throat> first and foremost, obviously, the tower has been saved. So, I think that's something we should be really happy about. I don't know if you've actually noticed, but yeah. it's not there. So, um, we achieved our initial aim, which was to save the building. Um, and the process has begun to rebuild it in the very early stages of that. And um, since then, uh, we've had some additional correspondence with the contractor who has put in an extension request. 
uh, which I received today. Um, we kind of anticipated that coming through, so that's not something that's brand new, but it's just been officially received. Um, so my paper stipulates that we're still working towards an end of October completion, um, which is the case. Um, they have extended the request though to the 11th of November, just to make you aware, which is a five week extension on the original date. Um, the additional cost for those five weeks has been factored in. So if I take you to the budget, um, we currently have earmarked or have about to spend um, 18,000 of the 35,000 contingency that is set aside. So we are over budget in that respect, but we are eating into some contingency, which is about halfway. So we're halfway through the project and we're halfway through the contingency. So that's what was anticipated. Um, so just to make you aware though, obviously with the weather as it is, um, we're not, we were hopeful that some, some time could have been made up, but looking unlikely, um, just because, yeah, for instance, yesterday they couldn't be on site at all because of the weather. It's been very unseasonal for this time of year, but it's nothing, it's completely out of control. Um, in terms of the National Lottery Heritage Fund, um, the figure that we are expecting to receive is actually not 79,600 for expense. It is 75,512 and 17 pence. And the reason for that is that one of the invoices for the contractor stipulated um, BAT incorrectly, where it should be excluded. So it's just a, a technical error on that part, but that doesn't affect um, what we'll receive. So that's been accepted and we're expecting that to come through in the next week or so. So we have essentially spent a hundred, just over £120,000 and National Lottery have uh, 66% um, intervention rates. So obviously they don't facilitate the entire amount. So that's where we are in terms of the update. Do you have any questions before I go on? I don't want to use it. So. <clears throat> Um, so external floor, um, so this is to do with the existing site, um, so where the tower once stood, there was some crazy paving around, just quite a lot of it actually, around the outside. Um, within the original tender, we requested that was to be completely removed and taken off site. There's been quite a lot of safety concerns lately, again, weather concerns and things like that have you know, raised this. But due to the extensive power tools that have to be used on the tower, there's a real concern that that section of cliff may not sustain <laughs> any more work, particularly going directly into the cliff itself to be able to <laughs> remove um, the crazy baby. Um, my biggest concern is ensuring the safety of everyone up there and getting them off that section of land as quickly as possible. Um, so the request is essentially to keep the paving as it is, where the tower once was will be infilled with the topsoil which is still on the site, the six dumpy bags of it up there, which has the seed bed from the existing land so it should regrow, and then place some sort of plaque in the centre marking where the tower once stood with the compass marking. So it would be a nice talking point for people to visit, it would have to be fenced off see just in line with the existing fence line because it is just not safe up there anymore um, and so it is within your control but also not within your control because there's three parties to this project in terms of the license and the lease um, to have ourselves the landowner and then also the leaseholder land so the decision you make will be put forward to them to also make um, and if we have a consensus, then that's obviously what we'll do. If any party disagrees, then we'll have to continue with what was originally planned. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, so 
the recommendation is to not remove the paving around the outside, subject to the landowner and leaseholder's consent, and make the area safe as part of this project. I'm really happy not to move it, but I just wonder where we stand with um, natural England on it. So natural England's concern won't be around the maintenance, maintaining the paving. It will be the concern around the infill and what we do there, which was always to build the topsoil um, and make good, essentially. But, sorry if I may. I, I always thought that the the argument was it was a quid pro quo, the site being vacated by the old structure equaled the site being taken up by the new structure, and, and that was the balance that they were happy with. H have we consulted them about leaving it? No, they're not part of the consultation for that aspect. They have had no had no um, play whatsoever since plan. Yeah. Just in terms of like safety, for me, this is a leave well alone and replace where you can the topsoil. Um, I actually think it would be really interesting to see the timeline of that like area eventually, because we know it's going to eventually go. So to have that as a visible <coughs> monument of where that land stood. Um, but perhaps with Peter's concerns about that with very close, sorry, I can't get them up on that. Um, maybe we could have in some potential mitigation somewhere, I don't know, to kind of make up for that loss potentially of that like land. I don't I don't know how to recommend that, but I'm happy with leaving it alone, but not if there's any kind of friction with natural England about the the flora and fauna. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if there's a health and safety concern, then you know it is that trumps everything else. So I'm quite happy to to recommend it being sort of covered over the topsoil. But I would suggest that we simply cover it over the topsoil and allow it to go to nature and not attempt to put any markers. The storm tide stood here. Because if that is on the wrong side of the fence, as it were, there are going to be people that will want to jump that fence and stand where the storm tide used to stand. Um, it, it, to me, it's an invitation to get to it. Even if we, you know, even if we make it hard to get to, it will then become a challenge to get to it. And I, I would have serious reservations about putting a, a, a marker up, you know, just cover it with soil and leave it blind. <laughs> um, Craftic here. Yeah, exactly. Here, like blue plaque and everything. This was like a sort of thing. Now it's see. I mean, I can just sorry, mm. I'm mean, Peter. I can certainly, obviously, the discussions I have with Cornwall Council will bring up Master England anyway. But I can't have those conversations unless we agree. So. That's what you wish to do. It's your project, essentially. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was up there the other day, the granite steps leading, which used to lead into the swimming pool, mm -hmm. still in situ. I presume they are definitely going, and it will literally just be a crazy paving bit. That's the okay. It's not part. There's a crazy paving bit part of this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The recommendation doesn't say about a flat, so I think we can we could agree the recommendation and then um, decide on the flat at a later point in six months' time. That might be a move point anyway. Is that a can I, just, can I just run past what I've got down yeah. so? Yeah. I know, I know, but it's important because there's a distinction to make. I've got to propose for the landowner and leaseholder of the storm tower to keep the existing outside forms. We can't just do it. Yeah, yeah. no, that's the proposal. We just do a job. Yeah, you take it for them. Yeah. Um, was that unanimous? I think against. <laughs> right, now we're through. So receive an update regarding. Hang on, we're not. All right. Okay. 
kind of thing, black bowl. And um, adjacent to the tower is a disused black bowl, um, which is coming down to the same use. It's um, historically, and from a heritage perspective, very integral to the building and to the history of the town. It has to be moved, um, and it will be moved very soon, and it has to be um, reconditioned because it can't be put back up as it is, because it's just going to fall back down. And so because we have to do that, um, again, you have an option subject to every other party involved's agreement as well for that flag to be brought back into circulation and used. So um, legally, um, we are liable. Yeah. Liable for the tower for the first five years after response to it, and um, for the first five years after the project's completed to ensure it's okay and safe and doesn't fall down. And um, so, in turn, that will then also include flagpole. So, should you wish to use it, it is. I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> and what I would only, I would just give caution that obviously the location of it is very different to our other black holes. So if we were to use it, maybe just give consideration as to what condition that's based upon and whether we look at some sort of heritage. Aspect whether we look into the Coast Guard or the RNLI, which is what it used to be used for originally, or potentially do we just fly it for like RNLI weekends? I don't know. Yes. Cool, but... We'll worry about what's flying on it. We will stick strictly to the pole if everything goes down. Yeah. 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 Um, to keep the poll, yeah. I won't go into the second part of what I was going to say then. Happy days. <laughs> um, Peter and then Katie. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, being as that this black poll was an integral part of the use and the whole raison d'etre for the tower, I think we should use it, absolutely, definitely. And being as the view is now on the international map for uh, black poles, <laughs> we, should, we should embrace it. <clears throat> Thank you, Peter. Katie. Um, I'm confused about the black hole bit because actually looking at it, really old photos are in the black hole. Um, and the flagpole that we might be referencing is that little one there that's actually on top of the actual building itself. Uh, I think the big one. Yeah, no, yeah. but I wonder about this. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, is it originally actually, is this the old flag hole that they might have been using for so next, erecting a new one next to it? Outside, yeah, no, yeah, I know it's like over here. No, no, no. For the picture, yeah, you can see the lines coming down to the left hand side, yeah, so that the flagpole was much bigger. It was like that, which is the same as the one that they've got on the other hill, yeah. So, in some ways, we've already moved it, we've already got it on top of the dam because <laughs> that is very sim similar to the one that we've got on top of the dam, like, but it's quite here. <laughs> Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> seen, that one you can see there has been replaced with the one that's currently on site. Yeah, so it's not original, the one that we've got. No, but it's part of the current listing. Right. Mm. So, so it's, it's not that little stick that's on top of the No, there. that's for the electricity. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> and then this this big white one, completely gone, nothing like it. And we're not going to plan to build a big white one back, but it we're planning to build. For life. So it's but it's a light for light for what's existing at the moment, not yes. what's yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's replacing what is up there with left. something similar. But it's not originally what's up there, it's what's up there now. The yes. original's up there. Yeah, we're, we're, the we're replacing there. the tower that is there now and the flagpole that is there now. Yeah. With some straight, normal, straight white. Well, it would be identical yeah. to what yeah. is currently there. Yeah. yeah. But just one that's not going to fall yeah, into one's head. Um, I think it's just making it safe, effectively, isn't it? Just making it sort of safe. And... Yeah. Right. Um, I propose we say something. All in favour. That is unanimous. 
Can we all say, sorry, Mr. Mayor, can we all say strongly the, the second to last paragraph or sentence, which reads, Council has the opportunity to request the landowner to lease hold of this plaque or be brought back into use if they so wish? Is that a formality to actually ask if you can have a flagpole that isn't used or a flagpole that is used? You can have a flagpole that's not used. Right. I would like to see it used. Yes. Um, <laughs> so it's, my understanding is that the flag protocol policy is at six, so that that's that renewed really in February next year. Yeah. So presumably we would include in our new protocol protocol the protocol we want to see on that platform. So yeah. Like, but not in haste. Yeah, I mean, we, we took advice from the house on that issue, and the next time flag will be discussed will be at the annual review, unless somebody puts an agenda item on the agenda. Um, right, that vote went through. We, yeah, we can talk about future use of it in future people if that would be. Receive an update on the view flood alleviation work. It it's me. It's a very short paper. <laughs> very, very short. Um, so uh, myself and uh, facilities manager met with the environment agency and representatives of PIA uh, who do the work um, last week uh, to discuss the timeline to take uh, programming for all the works. They intend to set up a site for the flood alleviation works uh, along the lead from the 21st of August. Um, the Closure of Boku Gabarik Way, down the back here past the side and the side bridge will take place from the 29th of August, with a reopening date scheduled for the 31st of October. And the works themselves are projected to end in April 2024. Uh, signs showing the diverted route and giving a map and explaining what the work uh, taking place is, is for what will be put in place. Uh, in time for the closure. That's my report. <laughs> That's it. That's an update. Any questions? Even better. Oh, can I just add? Sorry, if there are any questions from Councillors, please feel free through me because the environment agency has welcomed any questions and we can answer those for you about the work. Okay. Um, to approve the change from license to lease for the economic check and to authorise the ceiling of the lease. Again, you know, what I'm <laughs> yeah, could we clarify what's going on? Yeah, so, um, I was hoping it, that in time we would have back, um, the lease suggested by the contract, and that I would have had time to run that past our solicitors to get their view on it, um, and to be able to have that discussion and have it see all the time for this meeting. That was optimistic of me. Um, we didn't receive the, the, the lease back until this week, and there are some they're not. Concerns their points raised by our solicitor that I believe it would be useful for the council to consider before we rush into um, sealing and agreeing that lease. So, if with your permission, councillors, if we could defer that particular topic until September's meeting, that would be possible. I suppose we do that. All in favour? Against? Abstain? For the Financial report schedule of payments made between the 21st of July and the 3rd of August 2023. Any questions on them? Yeah, um, I'm mainly around the, the main name of the law because I think it's incredibly expensive. Um, the domain main name of the law at the bottom, um, like even checking. The forbidders, whoever registers it, the maximum they charge is kind of twenty-five miles an hour. So the fact we're paying ninety-six pounds, you might can tell, for the main name of the seems to be quite expensive. Um, and on top of that, it also still has a huge name on it. So you probably need to change that. <laughs> it's the city down the wrong side. Right. Um, this is the .co.uk website, and so it needs to be down it and all that. So it's not. Yeah, I know, which is why I'm like, that's why the, the police is, and then check who actually did the register and then checking their prices, which is actually not that, it's not best creative, it's actually uh, the main, the main name provided by crystal.uk, um, 
So it's not actually, but respirate, like it's probably someone buying off someone buying off someone else, basically. Um, but as I said, also, it's also still got keeps in the way. So this would be that case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Otherwise, I propose we second it all in favour. Against abstain. Schedule of payments to be made on the fourth of August, twenty twenty three. Anyone got anything? Okay, I suppose we uh, <coughs> all in favour <coughs> against abstain. What's done? Meeting closed. Thank you, Mr. We are accelerating. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>